Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for Thursday, May 24th, 2018. We have a lot to talk about today, so let's jump right in. In the Northwest Caribbean Sea, just off the coast of the Yucatan, straddling the Yucatan, I guess you could say, too, Invest Area 90L now has a 90% chance over the next five days of developing into a cyclone of some kind. Now, this is just the academic classification. Think of it as the scientific way of looking at it, whether it's subtropical, meaning it has sort of a mix of mid-latitude storms, uh, kind of like this one up here, and some tropical features like you would see down in the deep tropics, sort of a mutt, if you will, or a purely tropical system. And since this is developing out of this sort of Central American gyre down in the tropics, I tend to think that it's going to be more tropical in nature overall, especially once it sheds the influence of this upper level low that's interacting with the broader surface low. But all of that is just the classification system of it. And for the average person out there, it doesn't make that much difference because the impacts could, could be pretty substantial here. And I'm going to explain why in just a moment. So here's the area that we're talking about, of course, and the Hurricane Center indicating that it comes up into the Gulf somewhere in here over the next few days, and it's almost a certainty that this goes on to develop. Here is a really nice animation from the GOES-16, and you can see right here in the Northwest Caribbean off the coast of Cozumel, Cancun, and over the Yucatan Channel, that's between Cuba over here and the Yucatan Peninsula. This is slowly starting to get better organized, deeper convection, and you, you think about it, this time of the year, we're not quite into hurricane season. While it is not unprecedented to have development, it's rare. So this is struggling against the overall climatological background pattern. And that it may intensify further is pretty remarkable in a historic perspective. So uh, here it is. And we're going to be looking at this kind of imagery a lot over the next few days. Notice, too, over Georgia, there's this very pesky surface low that's just been sitting there. I noticed Jim Cantori from the Weather Channel tweeted about it early this morning, uh, not related to anything going on with this system. And my phone beeping. Um, down in the tropics, hey, this is its not live, but things are busy, so bear with me. Um, down in the tropics, not related to what's going on with 90L, but a very juicy air mass up here. And if my phone beeps a couple of times, I'll just have to ignore it, all right? Uh, believe me, it's going to get real busy around here the next, uh, pretty much ramping up right now. So let's move on, shall we? So the key messages from the update this morning, uh, high chance of development, and I'm using a white telestrator, so that's not good on a white background, and uh, very heavy rainfall outline, too soon to know exactly where. These are all the early what we know now and kind of what we don't know. And what we don't know is where this ends up exactly, the structure of it and how strong it'll be, but there are going to be some negative impacts from this, and maybe increasingly uh, so. I'm going to show you the evidence to support that as we go forward. So this graphic that the Hurricane Center puts out, I will be tweeting these from time to time. This will be in our app. I'll put it under the tracking section. Hurricane Impact is the name of our app on the App Store and on Google Play. And these are the things that we can update on the fly. It's real nice. So watch how this evolves over time as well. All right, so let's look at some of the parameters in play right now. The Gulf of Mexico, warm. The Eastern Gulf, not quite warm enough overall for uh, strong tropical cyclone development. The water temperatures are just a little below the threshold. But up here, uh, along the loop current coming out of the Caribbean Sea and in through the Yucatan Channel, that's plenty warm. Uh, fairly high ocean heat content for this time of year as well. And then up along the northern Gulf Coast, this is shelf water, meaning that it's shallower and easier to warm up, but it's warm, all right? We're looking at 29, 28, 29 Celsius. So we're talking about 82, 83 degrees Fahrenheit, and that can support hurricanes. And you say, oh, Mark, you said the H word. What's up with that? Well, let me show you as we progress. Okay, looking at, let's just get rid of this. I got a lot of tabs. So the anomalies map updated today. We're not going to worry about what's happening in the tropical Pacific. Let's focus on this area. All right, so I just showed you the sea surface temperatures. Those were the actual. 
Now we see the anomalies here, the departures from normal. And if we zoom in to this section, look, all of the Gulf of Mexico, for the most part, except the area right off Florida's west coast, running above normal, especially right there, the northern Gulf Coast, running above the long-term average. So the water temperatures are warmer than normal. That also is going to lead to potential further development than maybe we were thinking before. Remember a few days ago when the GFS was showing a hurricane in the northern Gulf and people were dismissing it and I won't say laughing about it, but it seemed to be um, sort of thought of as fantasy. Well, it may not be so much fantasy after all, and I'll show you why as we move through. All right, so this is the morning model plots. All right, that's the 12 UTC. This is initialized early this morning, about 8 a.m. Eastern time. And you notice that the general curvature of the track envelope is up towards somewhere along the central Gulf Coast, anywhere from Pensacola over to perhaps the Mississippi Louisiana border. Remember this because we're going to look at an updated map in just a moment. The intensity guidance, the envelope, fairly flat overall. The statistical, right here, the ships, that's the literally the statistical hurricane intensity prediction scheme, indicating fairly modest strengthening to tropical storm intensity. The dynamical models, not so much. But wait till I show you this. The very latest European, this is from tropicaltidbits.com, Levi Cowan site. This is the ECMWF, the uh, European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasting. This is hour 48, and we're looking at the heights of the atmosphere, sort of your troughs and ridges. This is a big old ridge of high pressure. Another one over here, and then kind of a weakness over here, which is your trough. I told you, my phone uh, going to be busy. But I have to leave it on in case I get a call from somebody that I need to take. So we'll just move on. It's going to keep beeping, though, so please forgive me. So here's your weakness between the ridges through here. Maybe a way for this to get through and impact the northern Gulf Coast. But that's down the road. Uh, at the surface, this is our feature down here. All right, so watch what happens. This is 48 hours out. Here's 72 hours. And the European on this particular site, we only get it every 24 hours. And you notice low 990s for pressure. So a fairly quick intensification coming out of the Yucatan Channel from 48 to 72 hours. We move ahead to 96 hours, and it curves back just a little bit. So we're kind of going like this, and the pressure continues to drop. And then finally, at 120 hours, five days out, a landfall along the area of Alabama, Florida, Mississippi, somewhere in there, between Pascagoula and maybe Pensacola. That's not important right now. It will be later. Obviously, we're talking about five days. The error could be huge. You know, it could be anywhere you know, like that, I guess, uh, if you think about it. But the bottom line, it intensifies it quite a bit. Look, there's a lot of isobars in there. The European is a, a very well-respected global model. The GFS is also showing rather robust strengthening, but it's still having some feedback issues trying to bring the system up and then curve it. So track-wise, I think the European has a better handle, but both the global models that we rely on the most, the European and the GFS, indicating more strengthening than we have seen in recent days. And that, my friends, is very important. So scouring Twitter and elsewhere for different graphics that people may have been posting, this is from the 12Z run right after landfall kind of showing you what it may look like on a re radar reflectivity. That looks like an eye to me. This looks like a central dense overcast of uh, heavy rain. It's got a good, I say good in terms of the classification only. It looks like a tropical cyclone, right? I mean, I'm not imagining things. So this is starting to become concerning, okay? And if we look at a different perspective, um, this one, by the way, I'm always going to cite where I, these, these come from. Weather.us, the model site there. I found this on a forum, by the way, and some of this is posted on Twitter. So I pluck it and show it here. But I always want to credit where it comes from. And then back again, Levi Cowan's site here, Tropical Tidbits. Pretty good wind field east side for the most part. Some of these winds, you know, um, pretty strong, all right? Uh, low pressure in the low 990s or so. The UK MET model, also a reliable model, generally 
showed in the upper 980s last night on its run. It's having some issues with the track as well. The bottom line, this might be stronger and much more tropical in its structure, leading back to what I was saying earlier. This is what the GFS was showing days ago. Now, does that mean the GFS was right? It's kind of like it's right when it's showing something 12 days out, and then it loses it, and then it's right as it gets closer. I don't know. It's bizarre. But here we are. This is the European here, folks. This is not some, you know, whatever model that's terrible with convective feedback and so forth and so on. This is starting to raise some red flags as far as I'm concerned that we have to entertain the possibility of a strong tropical storm or a strengthening Category 1 hurricane uh, Memorial Day weekend into Monday, Tuesday, okay? And here it is. I mean, you know, low 990s, it's strengthening on the way in. This is what it looks like on the vorticity. I'm trying to show you these different levels. I'm trying to see, too, is there something wrong? Maybe the model is off its rocker, but it's all starting to line up that the overall environment is going to be improving, and that's going to allow this maybe to intensify more than originally thought. And if we look back at 72 hours, look over Florida over here. Uh, a lot of strong winds over Florida, the potential for very heavy rain, possibly tornadic activity within this right front quadrant, any of these big feeder bands that uh, may try to come through, you know, like that. We really need to pay, pay attention to this over the coming days, and I am already making plans to drive down somewhere along this region and potentially set out some equipment. Uh, weather station, maybe the live cameras that we use. We'll talk about this more in just a moment and certainly more tomorrow. But um, it's, you know, kind of on my radar, to coin a phrase, pun intended. And then to end things today, or at least to start to wrap it up, I wanted to show you this. Remember I told you to, uh, uh, the early morning model plots. All right, we looked at those. Now look at the afternoon model plots. Look at this curvature that comes in like this after landfall with some of these different models. Now, some of them are pretty far over to the east. But this kind of turning like that, when you start to see that curve, that tells me there are changes in the works with the pattern up here, and we may be looking at something moving very slowly, or it never gets inland and starts to head more west. I'm not saying Texas is in, you know, we just have to watch this, and you can start looking at some of these things and saying, oh boy, big forecast headache coming up. Not a straight shot like Nate was last year, uh, where it's at the end of the season and these progressive troughs are coming through. Your system comes out of the Caribbean. Of course, Nate came into Mississippi and on into the southeast United States it goes. This might be a different story. We have a lot to pay attention to over the next several days, and i got to start getting ready potentially for the Gulf Coast, a trip down there. So real quick, want to mention I am on Patreon. Why does it do that? Let's try that again. <laughs> on Patreon, uh, this is what I do for a living, and your support is help, what helps make this possible. So if you're familiar, familiar with Patreon, it's amazing. It's a way for you to support people that provide you, well, they have creators, you know, musicians, people that write novels, gamers, all kinds of creators. But this is a way to, a way to directly support uh, the people that you patronize. You know, th you know, you watch my videos, if you think the information is useful, uh, you can support what I'm doing, and it's a sustaining thing, too, over on Patreon. So head over there, check that out. I'm getting ready to post a video, too, that kind of describes more about our long-term goals uh, on Patreon. So, you know, check it out. We also have the app, as I mentioned, Hurricane Impact on the App Store, two words, Hurricane Impact, and on Google Play. I'm also on Twitter, at Hurricane Track. And if we, uh, well, we, it's I right now, decide to go down it's memorial day weekend who's available to go and be in a hurricane right it's my job so i have to and i mean i love my job believe me but it's very this is not good timing believe me um if i do go i will be streaming live and we're going to talk about all this later but that'll be on youtube for everybody to see which is nice so we'll we'll get into that i'm probably putting the cart before the horse but i'm starting to think about possibly setting up along the central gulf coast and we'll address that more later, all right? So that's all I've got for now. 
I'll be posting on social media another blog probably tonight on HurricaneTrack.com's homepage and then another video discussion in the morning and then tomorrow afternoon. It's going to get real busy real quick. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. We've got a lot to cover here, and it's not even hurricane season yet. And I didn't even talk about the NOAA, NOAA, their forecast. Real quick, above normal is possible. Uh, slightly, you know, I think, what do they say? A normal to above normal season. So here we go. I'm Mark Sutter. Thank you for watching HurricaneTrack.com. That's my site. We'll talk again tomorrow.